So today I want to share with you a really impressive tool, unlike anything that I've seen before. Uh, the reason I'm so impressed with it is that, unlike many tools that claim to be doing your work for you these days, this one actually uh, aims to support your writing, because what it is is an academic writing coach. So it essentially becomes your supervisor, guiding you through the process of writing. Uh, and getting you to that finish line, whether you're working on your thesis, dissertation, scientific paper that you want to publish, or a research proposal. As you write and submit, it gives you unlimited feedback that's, to be honest, surprisingly good and relevant and intelligent, as well as other resources, such as uh, suggestions for further research or suggestions for where you can possibly submit if you're planning to publish your paper. And I am really impressed with the quality of this feedback, just how good it is. I cannot imagine better help or better support than this kind of a tool. I wish these things existed when I was working on my PhD, because this is essentially like having unlimited supervision, like having a supervisor to whom you can just continuously upload uh, your writing. So let's just quickly run through uh, the main options and this tool. So it's called Thesify, as you can see, and basically the, the way to start is to upload your document. So for this, I'll upload an article that's been published, which I co-authored. I wanted to upload my PhD thesis, but uh, there is a word limit. So if you want to upload your PhD thes thesis, it's fine, but you have to break it down into two documents, ideally. So uh, so I'll just start with this one. I'll just, uh, I want to see what it says about this article. As you can see, it's asking them whether you're the author, what kind of uh, a document it is, as well as other questions, whether it's uh, submitted or what field of study this is. Uh, because I believe there are different requirements and different expectations. It needs to know what kind of uh, criteria to adopt. And then eventually, after a few moments of waiting, you are taken to this screen. You can see the document that you uploaded. And then uh, one by one, it's also populating these sections. It does take a while because it has to analyze everything and provide this detailed feedback. At the moment, you can see that I am here in this thesis statement section. It explains what it is. Uh, so basically, it says it's a central argument or main idea that guides your essay, thesis, or whatever it is that you're uploading. So here, I'm uh, glad to see that uh, they believe the score here is excellent and explain why. So basically, it talks about you know this study, what it is, and why is good. And then there is a number of questions. So just don't think that it's always a yes man like uh, like ChatGPT. So the main thing, the main reason also, another main reason why I'm uh, so impressed with this tool is that it obviously gives you honest and objective feedback. ChatGPT is great, can be great, but it has become, like I said, a yes man recently because it will generally try to please you. So it's like a friend of yours who's, uh, who's afraid to offend you. You never know if it's real, what it says to you or not. Here, it will tell you, trust me, it will tell you if it's crap. And this is what it did uh, for my other uh, document that I experimented with. I generated a document with ChatGPT, and basically uh, it wasn't so good. It wasn't as good as here. Uh, but here you can see that basically it's, it goes through a whole kinds, uh, whole kinds of criteria uh, the so what test basically so uh as you know uh, when you're providing a rationale for your study you're providing a problem explaining why uh you're doing a certain study and the so what question is super important as the core of your rationale because sometimes you explain to me for example your research idea to explain a certain problem and that's exactly the problem uh, the question that i ask so what you need to be able to not just tell me why uh, or what problem there exists, but you also have to explain why there is a need for your study. So that's a so what text, a test, and all sorts of other criteria. As I said, uh, here I won't be going through every single detail because I'm not here to brag, and I wasn't the only author. It's just a good article. But here we can see in the evidence section uh, that it's not as perfect. So it explains why. So it basically believes its evidence uh, and thesis statement has have been partially met, and then explains why, what's the abstract and what is the statement, uh, and why it hasn't been met fully. So at the end, uh, after all this talk, it says, however, the paper does not sufficiently address opposing evidence or perspectives that could challenge the, the thesis, which would enhance its credibility. You can agree, you can disagree. Sometimes it's not really expected to, to provide evidence against your own findings, but but I agree that being critical is always good. I can't remember the exact claims and what's been said in that the, uh, that article at the time. But then quality and types of evidence, I can see, is also only partially met. It believes the number of sources could be improved uh, because the paper prim primarily relies on a few key studies to support its claims. 
And then interpretation of evidence, again, it has some problem with how we did that. So, however, there are patterns of weak analysis. Oh no, I was the one doing the analysis, <laughs> such as restating claims rather than providing deeper analysis of interpretation. Uh, I can't, I can't remember what it was. But in my defense, it was the first proper study I worked on. You can see at the bottom there are recommendations, and I like that as well. So let's, let's go back first, see, because now it's finished loading everything. There is feedback summary, and I like that as well. So what works well, uh, which kind of feels like chat GPT, but again, like I said, at least here I know it's actually an objective opinion, if you call, if you can call, you know, AI's opinion, objective opinion, uh, explains what works well, but then it doesn't, like I said, shy away from telling you what can be improved, what's not so good. So the study could benefit from a more detailed discussion of its methodological limitations and stronger connection between findings and existing literature. Perhaps it's right. And then the overall assessment. So uh, as I said, uh, here are recommendations. Uh, uh, in each section there are recommendations, uh, what you can do to improve it. So just imagine, again, this is, a, this is a test, of course, I'm just playing with this tool. It's something that's been published, it's been submitted and has been published. Just imagine how powerful and how useful this kind of feedback can be if you're just writing, if you're in the process of writing, because I can't even literally imagine how good it would be to have this kind of a feedback tool. And then there is another section, uh, suggested topics. So questions around topics you could discuss in this part of your scientific paper and assessment. Uh, so basically, suggested topic, what I could, I believe, what I could add to the discussion. Again, it's... Uh, it's probably the, mo the most challenging uh, task for this tool, considering that it's a paper that's been basically accepted. But if you're writing a dissertation, if you're writing a paper, an early draft, uh, this can be extremely useful because it's telling you what you can add, uh, what you can add to different sections, what you may also consider. So, so I believe this is uh, an amazing, an amazing addition. I don't know exactly about all the things in this tool just yet. I'm just playing around with it. But you can see there are many, many things that I can use. And this is the number one thing, again, why I would use this tool, this kind of feedback, because then after that, I can also start playing around with all the other things. So I'm not sure what feedback versus digest is. I think it's just digest is basically breaking down the whole thing. So if it's a if this article is not mine, I believe, so initially I was asked whether I'm the author, I believe if I want, if I just uploaded somebody else's article, I could treat, I could basically use this tool to also overview the whole, the whole thing, the whole article, because as you can see, it's just summarizing. It's not, this one is not groundbreaking because this has been done in other tools, but you know, why not have it? So while you're in this tool, while you're using this tool, it's a good addition. You can also explore other things or your own writing, perhaps. And then opportunities. So this is an interesting one. So based on this document, and uh, again, imagine perhaps doing a dissertation or a research proposal where you're still completely open-minded and open-ended in terms of opportunities, possibilities, and where you'll possibly, what you'll do. Uh, it will give you some ideas for what to explore further. So you can see long-term impacts of EMI, for example, which is English medium instruction on career traject trajectories. Investigate how participation in EMI prog uh, programs influences graduates' job prospects and career advancement in both local and international job markets. And then if you're interested in that, you can click on show related resources. I don't know what's going to happen, but let's see if it finds some resources. But then some other uh, recommendations. So basically, it's telling me about future research. One, I can use it in my future, my further research uh, section when I write about uh, further research recommendations. And two, uh, I can also just treat it as something potentially for myself to explore. Uh, and then there is so many more. So integration of technology, for example, enhancing EMI delivery. I think this one is brilliant. I don't know how it comes up with these things, but it, it actually is brilliant uh, because it's such a timely topic. And then there is this resources section and you can see there are publications. So again, kind of similar to what we see, uh, what we saw before, but before it was focused on what you can explore, here is just uh, a bunch of relevant resources, so publications. So again, if you're a student, you're writing on a topic, it just completely blows my mind. If I imagine myself as a student writing about my 
self-esteem and identity and, and whatnot when I was still working on my thesis and then just instantly gaining access to all these things that are so relevant. Uh, it's just amazing that it does it. In addition to these uh, publications, you can see there are also journals. And this one is pretty cool as well because this one is specifically for several purposes. If you're working on a publication, if you want to publish, this is exactly where you want to want to go because it will give you ideas of different places where you can publish. So you can also use it simply to look around and let's say explore some articles because it will give you it will point you point you in the direction of relevant journals. So again, I can just simply go and start exploring what they do, what they publish, maybe uh, in the process of exploring the current uh, existing literature and research. But specifically, if I want to publish, just look at the uh, these stats. So basically, it's showing you the match, for example, how closely it matches. It's suspiciously uh, consistent and says 92%. Perhaps it's true, but it shows you how it matches. It's 91 here. So yeah, it does go down. Uh, how suitable I believe this piece of writing is for these different journals. So at least I can go and start exploring. Even if some of them turn out not to be suitable, it doesn't matter. At least there is a list of journals uh, where I can try and, and submit this paper, or at least something to start with. Because if you've ever thought about publishing, you know that you have to explore all these journals and read what they do and, and what what kind of articles they publish. Here you have this list and you can just quickly use it. And then finally, let's just quickly see that that crappy proposal that I asked ChatGB to generate. I'm the author. I'm not sure whether I should go for grant proposal or other. Uh, any Anyone will probably do, let's just do other. What, uh, what it is, so basically I'll explain what it is, what field of study and all these things as well. So I said it's a research proposal, word limit, optional, I don't need that, and it's in arts and humanities. Click next. Here you can see that it's not so great anymore. So thesis statement, something that was the strength of that article, is actually pretty bad because it doesn't pass the so what test. So it's basically, it's not a good rationale, uh, doesn't pass the how and why test. It doesn't pass many tests, to be honest, in general, but uh, I, I haven't read this, so I, I don't know. I haven't read this, but it's something generated by ChatGPT quickly, so I would not expect it to be great. But you can see that some of it probably makes sense. It was a fairly simple request. I asked it to, to generate some ideas for uh, this study uh, about using digital technology in a classroom, I believe. Uh, but you can see that there are definitely things that could be improved in this one. So this is it. You can find the link to this tool in the description. Feel free to explore it. They do have a free version. Of course, they have a paid version, which is still pretty affordable in my opinion. If you're a student or a scholar or you work in research in any capacity, I believe it's it probably makes sense to have access to such tool. If you write on a regu regular basis, then you can always cancel it when you don't need it. But as I said several times without this video, it actually is a pretty amazing tool.